you know, back in the day, uh, my great, uh, great, great, great uncle, Jedediah, actually emigrated from England and went over to the deep south of America to try and ply his trade as a riverboat gambler sailing up and down the Mississippi on some of the paddle wheel steamers that were out there back then. I've got to tell you though, his, his name actually wasn't Jedediah, his name was Bert, but uh, he decided to change his name by deed poll because he th thought he needed a slightly sexier name to go and be a gambler in uh, Mississippi. Um, but you've got to remember, when this guy did this, this was back in the 1870s, this was right at the end of the Wild West, and it was really unheard of for a European to go over to the States to do this kind of stuff. But Jedediah, he did all right, actually. He was one of the few Europeans that actually made some money uh, on the riverboats over there. And when he came back to the UK in the 1920s, he actually wrote about it, and he wrote about it in this book. Modern Magic, a practical treatise on the art of conjuring and gambling. Okay, very, very old book, this one. And not only did he write about it, but he also was one of the first magicians to go out on a lecture tour, which he did towards the middle to latter part of the 20s. He was a very, very old guy by then. And during his lecture, he talked about his pet subject, which was card control. Okay, He felt that if you were a gambler, if you could control cards to known positions in the deck, you could make a lot of money. And the main application for this, for him, was cutting to high cards at the end of the night. The gambling would have finished, a huge pile of money would be thrown in, and the gamblers would literally cut to high cards. Now, a five would win you nothing in one of these kind of competitions. But Jedediah realised that if you could cut to a high card, say an ace, and you could position that card to a known position within the deck, then you could make yourself a lot of money. And he demonstrated how he would do this during his lecture tour. And this is what he would do. He would actually have a card selected from out of the deck. And this would be the target card. And it would be memorized by the spectators. Okay, so please take a look at that card and remember. That's the card we're going to control. He would then ask for the card to be replaced into the deck. But he would say specifically, don't place it towards the bottom of the deck because I can sight count where you're putting it. He would then say, don't place it towards the top of the deck either because I could sight count where you're putting that card. Instead, please place it towards the centre of the pack. And that is where the card would go, towards the centre of the deck. Now, even though Jedediah couldn't sight count where that card was, he still knew exactly what position it was in. And the reason that he knew that was because he had the feel for cards. He'd been round cards so long that he only had to pick up a block of cards and he would automatically know how many that he had. And in this instance, Jedediah could tell that there was exactly 20 cards underneath the selection. So the card was 21 cards from the bottom. Now this was Jedediah's great skill because what he could then do was take the deck and actually cut it into four roughly equal heaps. And Jedediah would know exactly how many cards were in each heap. And he actually writes about this in his book. You can see here in one of the chapters here, you can see where he talks about the four piles and, uh, and how he knew how many cards were in each heap. He would then put the deck back together in a slightly different order. But again, because he knew how many cards were in each heap, he then knew that he'd moved the selected card up from 21 from the bottom to 23 from the top. But that wasn't good enough for Jedediah. He would then say to a second spectator, give me any number between 15 and 20. And this was a free choice. And whatever number the spectator chose, let's say it was 18, Jedediah would control the selection to that position from the, number, uh, from the top of the deck. Simply, it has to be said, by giving the cards a fair table riffle shuffle. But that still wasn't good enough for Jedediah. He would then look at the audience and say, look, there are no bent corners, there is nothing sticking in or out of the deck. I will now dead cut exactly using touch alone 17 cards. And he would bring his hand over the deck and cut a packet of cards as quickly as that. And there would be exactly 17 cards here. Watch carefully. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 cards. He would then look to the, first, the second spectator and ask the second spectator to confirm the number that they'd asked for. They would say 18. Jedediah would say, this is definitely the 18th card. He would then look at the first spectator and say, sir, what card did you select from the deck, freely select from the deck, and freely return to the middle of the deck? And they would say the eight of spades. Jedediah would turn over the card and show that he had successfully controlled the eight of spades to the 18th position from the top of the deck. And the crowd would go wild at this point. But Jedediah was not only a very, very skillful gambler, he was also quite a good magician, obviously, because he'd been around cards uh, for so long. And in fact, whilst he was actually out on the Mississippi cruising up and down on the paddle wheel steamers, he actually came up with some original moves. And one of the moves he came up with actually looks like this. This is what he entitled, or what he called, 
the paddle wheel shuffle and it's a beautiful little thing and you can see why he called it the paddle wheel shuffle because it basically mimics the action of the paddle wheel on the steamer and using his paddle wheel shuffle Jedediah was able to come up with a method of actually producing four of a kind from four separate parts of the deck and this is what Jedediah called his paddle wheel uh, production okay and he used to do this kind of stuff um, in between talking about gambling to sort of like break up his lecture a little bit you know but now um, we'll talk about uh, another great passion of Jedediah's and that was blackjack blackjack was a new game that was coming through during the 1870s up until that part